Hello, this is Katie from Vintage and Vinyls. I'll be spinning some rockin' 50s records every week here on my channel, as well as showing you some cool Coca-Cola collectibles and other neat vintage finds. Stay tuned. Since this video is going to be on antique and vintage tins, I figured I would give a shout out to two of my favorite YouTubers that have wonderful uh, antique and vintage tin collections in their homes. And the first one is Patrick over at Trusty Huckster Mercantile. If you do not follow his videos, you guys are missing out. He has some awesome content. He loves vintage glassware like I do. And in his video that he did with the Antique Nomad on the hashtag show off your bunker collaboration, he showed his antique and vintage tea tins in his kitchens and the graphics were amazing. So you have to go check out Patrick over at Trusty Huckster Mercantile and also Misty over at Thrifter Junker Vintage Hunter. She collects uh, bathroom related tins like laxatives and uh, band-aids and all kinds of medicine tins as well as kitchen uh, tins like baking powder and spices. So she's really great. I will link both of these channels down below, but please go show them some love. Hey guys, this is Katie with Vintage and Vinyl back with another great video for you today. In this video, I am going to be sharing with you my antique and vintage advertising tins, ranging in dates all the way from the 1800s up to the 1960s. I have a lot of great graphics to share with you today. Let's jump in. The first tin I have here is a Miguel's Fastener tin, and I am going to start out with a bang because this tin is from the 1800s. It was patented in 1875 and 1833, and it says that it has 100 flatheads inside. It is Holmes, Booth, and Hayden's Manufacturers, New York, patented by the G.H. Miguel Company in 1875 and 1883 look at that brass is that not amazing it is embossed and this tin is rare i have looked it up and i cannot find very much on it other than that people are saying this is a rare tin and it is not in the tins book now probably the reason for that is this is a very specific type of tin it is not one of the bigger broader collectible um, tens that people tend to collect like coffee or tobacco or you know spice tens those have those are big categories that people collect and then some of these smaller categories people do like and they are collectible and the advertising is great but they're not always featured in a lot of the the books on the subject because they're not as collectible now the bottom says that it is Miguel's fasteners, a hundred different varieties. It says it's patented April 20th, 1875 and October 2nd of 1883. Holmes, Booth and Hayden's, Waterbury, Connecticut, manufacturers of brass goods. Just an awesome tin. And I got this from Misty over at Thrifter Junker Vintage Hunter really really lovely lovely tin and from the 1800s wow this next tin is no exception to attention to detail and great graphics and this still has the paper label on it and it is the hose bib and washer screw assortment this is from 1940 and it is the 68 assorted pieces for 60 cents look at that is that not amazing and not only is this graphic just really really great and it has the paper label it still has all of the bibs and washers and screws inside and most of them are a rubber that has sort of dry rotted a little bit over time but this one is leather. There are a few of them that are made from leather. I mean, look at that craftsmanship there. And you can see there's still screws. And then it has some of the, um, I'm guessing, hose attachments. This one says one and a half. I don't know a lot about plumbing, so I'm not exactly sure. I, I guess that's half inch sizes, but that looks really small 
for half inch. So I'm not entirely sure what that is. But very, very cool tin. I love stuff like this, especially when it features hardware and um, kind of, you know, tool themed design on the tin. Those are really the tins that I love to collect, along with typewriter tins, but just spectacular. And on the back, it says essential plumbing, maintenance, parts, quality, and merchandise, good workmanship. And then what's really neat about this tin is it says 110 West 17th Street, New York, New York. Now, what's missing from that address? Can you guys guess it? Well, you probably guessed right. There is no zip code, which means this is for sure older, and it is from 1941. Now, zip codes were not really enacted or invented until 1963. That's when they needed to kind of streamline the postal service and make things a little bit easier. So they added the five digit zip code onto addresses. But up until then, there was no zip code. So if you find anything, whether it be a tin or some other type of vintage advertisement that doesn't have a zip code, know that it is before 1963. And this does say uh, 1941 on it, but just an amazing tin. So the next tin I want to share with you is from 1930, and it is a Stops Leak Cement Iron Quick Setting Smooth On Number One. And look at that diamond label there with the blue and the yellow. Very, very striking tin. I mean, if you saw this walking down an aisle, it would definitely catch your eye. And what's unique about this tin it is a trial size, one and three quarter ounce. So I, I think that these, oops, I just dropped it. Um, I think that these were sold as a trial size so you could buy them uh, smaller so you could test the product before you would buy the whole can. But they also might have given away some of these trial sizes. If you know whether or not they gave them away or sold them, let me know in the comments down below because I can't find a lot of information on it. I'm sorry also that my dog is barking. Uh, there's a lot of people kind of not following social distancing and still going to the dog park down below. And my dog is going crazy right now because all of her friends are down there. So the directions say mix with very little water to form stiff putty. Press into defect, crack or hole with knife and allow to harden. And then what's neat is it says you can write for a free repair book and you want to write to Smooth On MFG Company, Jersey City, New Jersey. Now, the claims on some of these old tins are just great. This are just some of the uses that uh, you could use this Smooth On iron for. It says it stops leaks of water, stream, fire, oil, or gas in boilers, stoves, furnaces, radiators, pipes, and tanks, and water jackets. It also tightens screws, handles, nuts, and grease cups. Use on any metal, wood, or stone. So what can't this stuff do? I mean, it is like your fix-all for pretty much anything. And the cement inside of it um, has cemented itself to the tin, so you can't get the lid off. It's really stuck on it. This is a hefty little tin for some, some tin that's so little. I mean, it's got some weight to it. But I love the graphics on this. The next tin is another one of my favorites, and it's hard to choose because all of these are just spectacular. But this is the International Dial Company, Dial Time of the World. Now, this tin is really unique because it has um, Art Deco design to it but it was copyrighted in 1941. Now, the Art Deco movement in the U.S. really came over in the 30s, so it's possible that it could still have kind of filtrated in to a little bit of the 40s. Um, now, the 10 features these clocks, and they're different places around the world. So there's New York, San Francisco, Tokyo, Paris, London, Rome, Berlin, and Moscow. And it has some really clean lines and Art Deco font, in my opinion, and look the, at the inside. It's so white and pristine. Uh, and the back has a bunch of writing on it. 
and it says that it is a watch and clock dials dura enamelized refinished exactly like original guaranteed against tarnishing radium applied no charge for hands all types of dials made to order workmanship excellent prices reasonable insured mailing within 24 hours if you cannot get to our service through your material house send your dial direct to international dial company dial refinishers and manufacturers 22 west 19th street new york 11 new york so this does not have a zip code either but a really really cool tin now this tin is common i see it online a lot uh, of course not in as good a shape as this one i bought this one in a lot with a few other tens and it was a really great deal this was one that i particularly wanted and i had never found in the wild so i love this the uh, smooth on iron tin also is one that i don't see a lot i don't know if it's common or not it's not in any of the tin books but you might be able to search it online i saw one listing on etsy for like 38 dollars which I did not pay that much. I think I only paid $6 for that little tin. So you guys can look it up and do some of your own research as well. This tin is the Family Brad and Nail Assortment tin, and it has these awesome graphics of nails on there. Now this tin comes in multiple colors. This one is the orange tin. It has a little bit of yellow to it in the front, but it is orange and it also will come in like a blue color almost similar to the light blue on this um, watchmakers box 10 and the out the outside is is um, plain on the back but the sides have some great graphics so you could display this 10 either way like i love that uh, symbol there i just think that that logo is really really great and uh, this Brad Family Nail Tin is from 1950. And it says that it's made in the USA and its contents have six and one half ounces. <laughs> now, I'm sure this was used a lot in people's home workshops and it has been hammered on probably one too many times because I can't get this open at all. But I do love the graphics on this. And this was the first tin that I got as far as um, advertising tins that really got me started in collecting all these miniature and fun tins. The next tin is one I know you guys have probably seen before. It is a really common tin. They're pretty much everywhere. You can pick them up for a couple of bucks. And it is a large economy size number 175 Scotch brand transparent tape, one half by 800 inches tin. And it has this really, really great plaid design. Now, I see a lot of people putting these out just at Christmas time, but I leave mine up all year round because I love plaid, and I think that is spectacular. Um, this Scotch tape tin is from the 1950s. I'm sorry, 1960s. And it is made in USA by Minnesota Mining and MFG Company. It is St. Paul 6, Minnesota. It is pressure sensitive adhesive tape and it is patented under one or more of the following U.S. patents. And then there's a lot of patent information there. But this is just a great little small tin, lots of color, and a really good way to start your collection if you're looking to add something or to just start tins in general. And I got this in the lot um, that I talked about. The next 10 is something that reminds me of my childhood i would go into libraries like you probably all did and you'd see a big roll of that library tape as i call it but it's the cellophane tape and then it would tape in those uh, library cards that you'd check in and out books and of course sometimes it would get so dried out that it would crack and be this horrible dark brown color but if if you do get it to work it is really strong tape and this is Texas Cell Industrial Tape Corporation Cellophane New Brunswick, New Jersey Tape. And I love the color of this tin. Look at the outside with that stripe going around the outside. That is absolutely stunning. 
And this tape is from the 1950s, this 10 rather. I mean, I'm sure the tape is too, because it came in the 10. But it is Texas L tape, one roll, half inch by 800 inches. It is patented and it's also made under license under one or more of the following US patents. And then what's interesting is it says license for use in the United States and not to be exported. Texas L tape. Very, very cool. And again, this one's pretty common. You can pick this up for probably $5 on eBay plus shipping or get it in a lot. Now the inside does have an arrow that says important. And it says Texas L tape works best under normal temperature and humidity. If the tape dries out and breaks on unrolling, place this roll in a covered can for a few hours with slightly moistened bladder or blotter, I'm sorry, in the center of the can. This tin is just great. I mean, I love all the tins, but I'm drawn again to red because red is my favorite color. And to me, that graphic just really, really stands out. The next tin brings back some memories for me because I found this tin when I was going through some things in my 1916 Red Eye Singer sewing machine that belonged to my great grandmother. And when I found this tin, I called my mom and asked her about it. And she said that the Secret's antiseptic throat lozenges were used a lot by my great grandmother. And these, this tin was hers and she carried uh, these around everywhere she went. So this is the tin that has something kind of repurposed inside. You know, as I've mentioned before, these weren't thrown away. They'd be reused to hold other items because they were so well made. And this tin has these baby diaper pins. Here's a little ducky. And then there's all kinds of colors inside. So you got pink, blue, yellow, and white. But I think that's kind of a neat family piece. And I don't usually collect bathroom uh, related tins like this or medicine tins, but I love this. And this says, Fast relief of minor throat irritations. Socrates antiseptic throat lozenges are not only pleasant to the taste, they contain soothing antiseptic medication. That is why they speedily relieve minor throat irritations associated with coughs and colds. They are ideal for relieving smoker's throat and for easing throat discomfort following tonsillitis. Some of these claims on these old tins are great. Like the back of this tin, it says warning, persistent sore throat or sore throat accompanied by high fever, headache, nausea, or vomiting usually indicates a severe infection and may be serious. Consult a physician promptly in such case, or if sore throat persists more than two days, do not administer to children under three years of age unless directed by a physician. Keep all medicines out of the reach of children. And each lotion contains 2.4 milligrams of hydrochlorocycline. I'm not sure I'm saying that correctly. And then it says it's the Quinton Company Division of American Co. Incorporated, Rahway, New Jersey, 07065. And again, the directions are pretty much the same there as the inside of the, the tin, basically relieving sore throat, irritation, and smoker's throat. But this is a really neat tin just because it has the family history to it. And of course, I do love that blue and silver color. It's really neat. Now, these tins are pretty common. There are multiple, multiple versions of these tins, some being older. Um, but I, I love this, this little tin. It's square and it's relatively small, so it is easy to display. And this is from the 1960s. The next tin is a 1950s Kodak film tin. And I love photography, so I was really drawn to this tin. I found it in my grandparents' basement going through some of their old slides. And it's a screw top, um, Kodak 10 with a little like rubber seal on the inside and a domed lid. Now this 10 comes in many colors. Uh, the base will always be yellow, but the top will be brown, orange, red, white, and I think maybe blue or no, green, green, green's the other color. But these are really great little tins and they're fun to display. 
The next 10, I don't know a lot about it. I have looked it up online and I cannot find any information. Of course, it's not in the tens books that I have. So it could be a little bit newer because it does have a zip code and um, it, the graphics, the font, you know, just seems like it would be something from a more modern time period, but it slides open like this, which is kind of cool. And it is a metal and welding supply company, Renewal Flints, 1724-26 Tightman Street, Allentown, Pennsylvania, 18104. And it still has the little flints on the inside. Let me close that back up so they don't go everywhere. But I think the orange really stands out with that black. And again, you could display this at Halloween, but I kind of like to display my tens all year round because the graphics are just great and I love looking at them. The next 10 does not have a zip code on it, so I do know it's older. I think that it's probably from the 1950s, just given the graphics, but it is a potluck jewelry uh, watchmaker's 10, and it is from 15 Madeline Lane, New York, 38, New York. It is the headquarters for hard to get parts, genuine watch materials, jewelers supply. And there's no markings on the back or on the sides. Now, I can't get this tin open, but there's nothing on the inside. I found this at an antique store, and I was really just drawn to uh, the graphics and the, fa the fact that it was a watchmaker's tin. I mean, you, you can't beat that. That's just really, really lovely. That um, kind of blue and yellow color, I think, stands out on a tin. Uh, it's really easy to see, and it looks great in the display, too. The last piece is the bonus 10. So we have finally made it to the bonus 10. And this one is definitely older. It's probably from the 40s or the 30s. There's no information on it because the paper label has disappeared. You know, paper just didn't survive. So when you get something that has a paper label, it is really amazing. And uh, this is the most unique 10 that I have ever seen. It is double-sided. And the first side is cotter pens, and the bottom side is lo uh, lock washers. So the cotter pens are still inside here. A little rusty, but they're still inside. And so are the lock washers. And these are um, screwed metal caps with a little bit of indention around like this cardboard where it would have kind of locked down into. But the paper label is gone. You can see where the glue was that held the paper label together. Um, this tin is just so cool. I have never seen anything like it. And I did pay up for it. I paid $12, which I usually don't for a tin, but it was so unique that I just had to have it. And again, I love anything hardware related, so I just think that that is amazing. I, they just don't make things like they used to. I can't say that enough because every time I hold something and I see its quality, it just really amazes me. So I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please give it a big old like and comment down below with your favorite 10 out of the whole video. This is going to be a little mini series, so I will be doing another video featuring more 10s in the future. I have more to share with you, but of course I can't cram them all into one video. And I do hope that you are staying safe, staying in, and binging YouTube.